Today we're doing Pokemon business Q&A with my wife Andrea and our girl Mia. Degiffy, a uh, OG from Twitch, asks, what's your favorite part about running the business? Come here. I'm gonna turn that over to you. Oh. What's your favorite part about running the Pokemon card business, dear? Mine? Yeah. Um, I know you love it. My original answer is to say nothing. Mm -hmm. But we need to stretch it out to 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna money. say that my favorite part is that you get to stay home and take care of the dogs while I actually go make a living. Oh, yeah. while you work your real job? Yep. Okay. Well, that's actually a good answer. Yeah. yeah. She really was gonna say nothing. Uh, to answer the question about what my favorite part of owning the business is, definitely spending time with the doggos. I think they'd be super lonely if we were both gone from like nine to five. But uh, I don't know. I think I'm a really unhireable person. I don't think I could get a real job anymore. Only... He has too many needs. I have too many needs, yes. But at this point, this is kind of all I've got. Like, if I don't continue doing Pokey any, I'm, I'm going to have to do something else that I make up. Uh, start the ASMR channel again. Uh, a clothing company or a reptile zoo. Yeah, I, I'm, stuck. I'm stuck with this job. So, hanging out with the dogs and just, like, the freedom of it because... I just can't answer to people or stay awake during the day. I'm unhirable. That's Let's a see. good descriptive word for you. Unhirable. Yeah. Yeah. No. Like nobody would want it really me. Really matches you. Uh, Degiffy also asks about the lick count to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. 150. Okay. Javier asks, what store item has been selling the best this month? Do you know? My first gut feeling is um, Twilight Masquerade because okay. it has the, the, oh, okay. the geode. The geode? Uh, green. You're so close. Greninja. Earlier. Wow, there it is. Okay. Greninja card in it, and yep. apparently that's hot stuff, you know? It's hot stuff, guys. Or, as you know, just a classic of 151. Do you want available now on back order? Uh, honestly, she's she's bright. I don't know which one, though. It's one. It's either 151 or Twilight Masquerade. And honestly, right now, Surging Sparks, because we put that on pre-order, like, you know, two and a half months before it comes out. So, technically this week, Surging Sparks. Are you excited about Surging Sparks? No. Uh, favorite Pokemon? An Eevee. Oh. He's an Eevee. Why don't you tell him your real answer? I have a different one? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's the Black Charizard because Brian never had one. Yeah. yeah. So we played Pokemon Go for like 40 hours a week uh, years ago. And it was community day for Charmander. And she... I got a shiny. She got a shiny. I did not. And it's been six years. Yeah. She doesn't play anymore, but she won't trade it to me. So... Yep. So the shiny it's, Charmander. It's the principle. You have to get it on your own. I've I've said it before. I like Ampharos a lot, but I'm getting Kabutops tattooed on my like tricep here when we hit 10 million in revenue. So Kabutops is ranked up there too. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't permanently affix them to my body. She's getting a Pokemon tattoo once we hit 25,000 subs. No. So this is a question from Risen Sparrow. How many questions of Pokemon cards can you lift? How many what? Cases of Pokemon there cards you can you lift? That's five. I don't want to add another one, honestly. More than five. That's something. Ruand. So Ruand. I don't know. So Ruand. What set would you recommend for new seller with low capital? Uh, I'd say like honestly 151 just because of the popularity. It's going up in price quite a bit though, honestly. Uh, just a few weeks ago we were selling it for like I think like 65 or so. And then it went to 75. Then we went down to 72 for a little bit. Now we're at 78. So it's like expensive, but. It also sells super fast. The The churn and burn is real on 151. Uh, the one problem I have with it is it's only 20 packs. So you, you can only divide the price by 20 instead of 30. And dividing by 30 is nice because if you buy like a box for say 35 bucks, 30 packs, you can sell each pack for like $2, which is totally affordable. And then you double your money. So I'd say a, a box with 30 packs, like, any, any, any time it's the newest set. Stellar Miracle would be the newest set right now. Paradise Dragona is gonna be, I think, a little more expensive, maybe like $65 on the US market. So, but still you can divide it by 30 packs. And again, if you sell each pack for, you know, three bucks, it's like you're making 30, 40% on your money. So Dragona probably, 151 definitely. It's real entertaining stuff here. Mountain Top Pressure asks, what is the best Chinese set you've ripped? Well, I haven't ripped very much Chinese quite yet, but uh, Brave Stars I think will probably end up being the best, Brave and Charming Stars, because they have the 14 exclusive Pokemon Go arts that you can't find in like any other language. Uh, long story short, Niantic's banned in China, so Niantic uh, owns a lot of the artwork for the Pokemon Go cards, and since Niantic's banned, 
Pokemon had to kind of like redesign 14 of the cards in a Brave and Charming Star. So you get exclusive art. It's kind of a fun gimmick. Um, you know, Nine Colors Gathering, I think will be everyone else's favorite. That's our best seller for China. But I've done enough Eevee Heroes where it's not like that exciting or different. Thoughts? Oh, well, I originally thought the question was gonna be, like, was gonna be what's your favorite Chinese restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> wow that's okay. what i thought you were gonna say that, that sounded scripted that was, that was a great response we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stick with that what's your and favorite the answer is dragon walk by the way dragon walk express yeah speaking of china and and chinese food easton 2550 asks how can i get a chinese supplier it took me three years to find a chinese supplier and honestly i didn't even find this person they found me through the content there there happened to be a viewer and they emailed me so i'm actually a pretty horrible reference as far as how to ask um the problem with china is i think a lot of their social media is different than the us uh, i know they have instagram i think i think so but it's just not as prevalent no and so talking to china is a lot harder than talking to like japanese people for example because most of japan is on instagram pretty uh yeah it's, it's pretty much a standard app there so my guy does happen to be on Instagram, but I would not have found him without him reaching out to me. From my experience, you have to make content, get big enough to where they reach out to you because they see you as a way to make money. And uh, look at Rosie struggling over there. She's trying to get on the chair. Over. TLDR, keep trying. Yeah, she's right, honestly. You gotta just keep looking. Uh, type in hashtag Chinese Pokemon cards, Chinese Pokemon TCG. Anything searchable on Instagram is really all you can do. Uh, again, I truly tried for years and I could never find one. Hi, Brian. My question would be, how can I thank you for what you've done? Buy my stuff. Buy the business. Buy the, <laughs> Buy the business. How much? What would you sell this business for? The whole business? Yeah. All the merchandise down here, the email list, the marketing. Me. Oh, is it really worth anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously though, just keep watching. I appreciate your views. Uh, Stay subscribed, keep watching the channel, and, and leave comments, they're engaging, I appreciate it. Vianelv, how do I get Google to authenticate my store while only selling Japanese products? Um, if you mean just how to like do Google My Business, it really doesn't matter if you just type in the words Google My Business, you can add a profile with your business and they really don't care what you sell. If you're worried about like Wix and Shopify, as far as like them shutting down your store because of selling like inauthentic product, as long as you have invoices and receipts that prove you're selling official Pokemon card product, you're probably fine. Obviously, you're not gonna get an invoice from like Target with uh, Japanese cards, cause that's not a thing. But Wix and Shopify, they're mostly just making sure like you're not selling fake stuff. They're not Pokemon experts, so if you have invoices even from my own store that are like hey this product's legitimate this store has a uh, you know i have southern hobby and peach state as my suppliers that's probably all you need um as far as google authenticating a store i, I guess maybe email me if, if that's not the right answer you're looking for brian at pokeanny.com there's really no like authentication required uh that they would that they'd care about as far as what you're selling as long as it's not like you know drugs so email me if that wasn't helpful and I can I can definitely look more into that for you. Uh, Conscious Games. Can your lessons be used to create a video game store like DK Oldies or just selling new? Uh, I watch DK Oldies sometimes. It's a good channel. Yeah, I think most of the stuff I talk about applies. I think a lot of the stuff he sells is like used to. I think he flips stuff. So I'd say most of it applies. Um, if anything, it's, it's just... You know, I've said multiple times how much riskier it is opening up a brick and mortar versus like doing this in your basement with your happy smiley doggo. The, the overhead on brick and mortar, at least like in Omaha, which our real estate is super cheap here, by the way. It's just, it to me, it's not worth the risk. I'm sure DK Oldies would say the same thing. You know, if you have $100,000 cash at the minimum, you could open up a store that's like probably 1,500 to 2,000 square feet, but you're still going to be struggling for a while. So... Yeah, I mean, a lot of the advice I give applies to, like, I mean, there's some people that watch my channel that have nothing to do with trading cards at all, and they say how much it helps, which is awesome, but, uh, you know, as far as being DK oldies, I mean, you better hope you've got six figures laying around if you want to do it, like, with a, a low amount of risk, because, you know, a couple bad months, you signed a five-year lease, a five-year commercial lease, 
a couple bad months and you're going to be subleasing that thing out or declaring bankruptcy. And I think with the, you know, the whole election year and, and just all the chaos and volatility of the market, I mean, I wouldn't touch brick and mortar for at least a few years until we know what's going on. But uh, yeah, just start in your basement. We've been doing it for three years. It works. Unlikely morphs. I'd like to hear more about your ball out on eBay slash IRS run in story. That's referring to when I got that scary bill from the IRS. Like. At the second house. Yeah. First house. First house. First house. Yeah, basically, I uh, didn't consider my eBay business a business because it was fun give you guys a little bit of a hint even if your business is fun it's still a business which means like you have to declare the income i was under the impression since it was a hobby i didn't have to like declare my income so i sold stuff on ebay and i really didn't tell the government about it so after doing this for a few years i got a big fat bill from uncle sam saying hey you owe all this money and uh since i didn't tell them about the income i also didn't tell them about the expenses so if i sold if I flipped like a, a TV from a garage sale that I bought for 20 bucks and I sold it for 300, then uh, that's a bad example. <laughs> well, like the phones. Okay, the iPhones. Yeah, so I had a deal. Um, I bought a bunch of used, or I bought a bunch of uh, unlocked iPhones from Nebraska Furniture Mart, and each one was like I don't know, 200 something bucks, and I sold each one for 500 bucks. So the government, since I'd never declared the income or the expense, well, they had the they had access to the income. So they saw a five hundred dollar phone. They called that five hundred dollars in profit. So they were charging me twenty percent on that five hundred in profit. When in reality, I actually spent two hundred dollars on the phone. So I only made three hundred dollars in profit. So I should have only been charged twenty percent of three hundred. And take that times two or three years of doing eBay, basically full time, you get a very very scary tax bill. And so for a good several months I had to find an accountant that would go through back in time with me. I had everything like on Excel, how much I paid for everything. It was just I never declared it. So after thousands of dollars of fees and interest and, and late penalties and all this nonsense, I eventually got like evened out. My accountant was a huge help. And then she charged me a fat bill for all the assistance. It was awful. So the, the TLDR, as Andrew would say here, is um, declare your income, even if it's a hobby, and even if you don't think it's a ton of money, because the government does find you. And also, more importantly, keep track of what you spend on the stuff. You don't need to keep receipts. Uh, well, okay, if you don't have a receipt, because it's like a garage sale, for example, you won't get a receipt, that's fine. Like, But make sure you keep a record. If you go to a garage sale or, or a Collecticon or some sort of other convention and you spend... $10 on a booster pack and you want to sell it for 15 at home, you got to keep track that you spent 10. Otherwise, it's going to be 15 in profit in the government's eyes. So keep an Excel. I always say the who, what, where, when, why. Who'd you buy it from? What company you buy it from? Uh, you know, where did you get it? What location and what like convention name? Uh, what is the product? Just describe it quickly. Who, what, where, when, when you bought, when you bought it, the date and why. That would just be a business expense, cost of goods cost of goods sold. So who, what, where, when, why on Excel? It's all you really need. We have just there to ask a Pokemon question. I like the name. Will there be a follow up to the new business from scratch playlist, or is Wix still unreliable for newcomers? Uh, no and no. So I realized that running two businesses it wasn't really in the cards for me. Haha, <laughs> that was a good good dad joke. In the cards. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Wait, what two businesses were you going to run? Oh, I was going to do like a... If I started from scratch and I was going to start a whole second business... Oh, not. yeah, you never did that. No. Yeah. No, I realized I was just not... No, I don't have the bandwidth for that. That was a good choice. Yeah, probably. So, I realized that I'm better off just teaching you guys exactly what I do for Pokey and E than documenting some journey of some second business that I can't do both and go to the gym and actually have like a wife that, you know sees me. So yeah, no, I'm not going to continue that particular series, but everything that I would have taught and would have showed you in that series, I do intend to make videos on, and I probably have made videos on over the course of the last several months. And if there's something specific that you want that I haven't talked about yet, leave it in the comment section. But chances are everything I would have done in that series, I'm, I talk about at the very least, even in these Q&A videos alone. Uh, as far as is Wix unreliable for newcomers, I made a video 
that was like all doom and gloom, like Wix is, you know, not allowing new people to start a Pokemon card business, shut it down, give up, you know, go never try again. But then I made an updated video, uh, maybe a, a month or so later. I'll pin that video right here, and it, it's like a 10 or 15 minute video. It should be a good watch. Uh, the TLDR there, you should be fine as long as you just follow the steps. I don't think it's going to be as doom and gloom as my original video suggested. I'm just going with what I hear on the market, and at the time, Wix and Shopify were going pretty crazy. Austin Soilow asks, Big fan of the channel. Sponsor me for my next pro MMA fight? Uh, no, but I will shout you out, so if you like MMA, go check out Austin's channel. Right now we're just sponsoring uh, Pokemon YouTubers who yeah, are a little more in the demographic. I'm sure there's a lot of MMA people that like Pokemon, though, so I won't sponsor you, but I will shout you out. Go check out Austin, guys. Fabrizio asks, hey, there's apparently Amex charges 3.5% credit card processing fees compared to the other ones, which I think are 3%. How are you handling that? I just pay it. When you run a business at scale and volume, you can't really look at the small stuff. You know, if someone's charging a little more processing fee, if someone lives somewhere a little farther away and you lose money on shipping, if someone rips you off, you know, that there's going to be theft, there's going to be uh, extra charges here and there, there's going to be conversions from yen to USD and vice versa that aren't favorable. When you're moving hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in cards, do those percentages add up? Absolutely. But can you do anything about it realistically to move the needle? No. So you just deal with it. You complain about it to your wife and you call it a duh. She said, she agrees. Uh, what's your typical day look like? SN16. So I actually have made quite a few little vlogs. Um, I have a playlist, I think, the business vlog playlist. For the most part, I wake up whenever I want. Uh, I, I used to wake up at like 1 p.m. a lot. I've been trying a little harder to do like 10.30 to 11. Typically, I do the orders from the night prior. Uh, the post office comes around noon-ish, and they pick everything up for me, which is great. After that, you know, I play with the dogs a little bit, take a little bit of a break. And then it's just a, a hodgepodge of things. Um, sometimes I talk to Japan. If there's a new set coming out, if negotiations need to be made. A lot of times I talk to the English supplier, Salon so Hobby or Peach State, about, you know, new sets coming in, any deals they can give me. I answer emails, uh, sometimes I edit videos, a lot of times lately I've been cutting videos up into little shorts using um, Opus, O-P-U-S, it's a program that AI does, you know, shorts automatically for you. I just kind of mess around with social media, do any marketing ads, every day is a little bit different, but Andrew gets home around 4.30ish, and then typically we go to the gym, and then we uh, eat dinner, and then I try to hang out upstairs for a little bit. Come back downstairs, usually by then I do more orders from like the whole day, and I try to make a video or two. Um, I've been trying to make a YouTube video like every other day for the most part. So I'll film that, and then I'll do orders, and then I'll end up editing that video around like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., stay up to like 4 or 5 a.m. doing that. Again, taking breaks, playing with the dogs. Uh, they have their playtime like at probably 1 p.m., uh, when Andrea gets home at 4, and then at like 10.30 p.m., and then usually around 2 a.m. is kind of their playtime. So we'll throw the sloth around for like 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how crazy Evie is that day. And, and that's about it. Uh, Monday is a Smashler day. The girls watch The Bachelor, the boys play Smash. Saturdays is go out with my dad to garage sales day. Sunday is dinner at my parents. Thursday is dinner at her parents. Tuesday is gym with her brother. I have, a, I have a pretty set schedule as far as, like, events with other people, but my day-to-day, -day, it's kind of whatever I want. Okay, so I mentioned a comment about USPS um, stealing packages, and they all do, by the way. FedEx is the worst. I would highly suggest not using FedEx. Uh, we've shipped out uh, a damn near $7.5 million of stuff now, so I've, I've got some experience. And FedEx has stolen more packages than USPS, DHL, and UPS combined, uh, times four. So we don't use FedEx anymore. But the Postal Service recently stole a package. And how they get away with it, basically, because um, you were asking, you're like, well, why aren't you insured on that? Uh, and we'll, we'll make this a two-parter. So the way they get away with it is the postal person signs on behalf of the, the buyer. And that's it. They just sign and disappear with it. And I have proof this has happened, but there's nothing I can do about it. So that, I mean, that's the TLDRs. They sign for the buyer and then it's like, oh, it got delivered, sorry. Tips I would give just to make this video a little more helpful. 
tips I would give if you're a store with the word pokey in your name, like pokey any, for example, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Um, and me included, and I'm finding a way to fix this. Uh, I might even change the LLC name, to be honest, to something like just random, like uh, you know, Pop Tart Co. or something, because they see Pokey and the people in on it, the people that know what Pokey means, that puts a target on the package. Uh, stupidly, my first year, I put, you know, we have a little Charizard logo built into our O. I had these Charizard logo stickers that I put on our packages, and I knew the post office was corrupt when I sent 27 packages out for our pack of the month. Remember the pack of the month? Mm -hmm. The Pottoms. And all 27 of them just got lost. They just disappeared. The 27 packages with the Charizard logo on them just all disappeared. So, of course, there was other instances with the uh, Charizard logo we put on the box. And once we stopped doing that on every package, theft went down considerably. So... That would be another suggestion. Fabrizio also asks, how would you deal with a customer who claims he sold them a fake booster box? Uh, it really depends how they ask me. There's some people that kind of just throw a temper tantrum in the subject line. I just got one recently. They don't even use the body of the email. They just tantrum in the subject line with, with, with an emoji, no less. Those people I'm a little more rude to, to be honest, because they literally said like, you sold me fake products, you should go to jail, this, this is a legal activity, I demand my money back, devil emoji. I'm not going to respond to that professionally. Um, for the people that have, you know, concerns and they word them in a more logical way that doesn't sound like an eight-year-old, I, I usually go through their order, I'm like, okay, did they buy Korean, Japanese, English, and usually it's Japanese, and I'm like, okay, they probably did the rip test, where you rip a card in half, and you can see, like, black ink in between the layers and that's basically the glue the black color well Japanese glue is blue so a lot of folks they'll rip a Japanese card they'll see blue they'll go oh it's fake and I'm like well no it's real if there was black ink in there the, we'd have a problem so I'll go through you know some steps usually I, I ask for pictures um, there's never been a time we sent anything fake but you know you got to go through the motions with these people there was one guy I just legitimately could not convince the product was real. It was a Korean box, and the uh, I think the issue was it was a Ancient Roar or Future Flash, and that was when they started not not covering them in plastic. Like, they just ship them. It was stupid. Korea effed up on that. Scarlet and Violet, maybe. Scarlet and Violet base. So they were convinced that since they weren't wrapped in plastic, they were fake, and even though I showed them several videos of people, you know, similar to Crystal Collects, I don't know if she actually opened that, but videos like her, you know, professionals, they just thought I was a scammer, so I just said, just send it back, I gave them their money back, and I blocked them, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with those people, so there's professional ways to deal with it, and unprofessional ways, you just got to make sure you're not dealing with an eight-year-old man-child, and you can usually get your way, that was the only time, and again, like seven and a half million dollars of sales, where I didn't uh, successfully convince the person they were wrong, so if you're worried about starting a business, if that's like your hang up, like, oh, what if people accuse me of selling fake stuff? Like, it's no reason to, it's, it's no reason to hesitate. It's going to happen, but not enough to, you know, not enough to be a real problem. Okay, Zook, what started you on your Pokemon journey? I might have answered this, and I'm sure I answered this in many videos, but, uh, you know, I've been a fan since like kindergarten. Uh, me and me and my, my guy, Jared Brown, on the playground playing Pokemon, and... So as a kid, you know, watching uh, the original, you know, Kanto series, I started on episode one, and I think my favorite episode was the, uh, the Shiny Ho-Oh, or Shiny Noctowl, I think it was, and I don't know, that was probably 2002 or so. I don't know, I watched it pretty extensively, saw all the movies as a kid, uh, and when we grew up, we just played the video game, I met my two best friends playing Diamond and Pearl, and that was when we were in eighth grade. And we're still best friends, and now we're all 31. So it, it definitely, you know, was the friend group influence. Uh, we named our doggo Evie, our first girl. And we played Pokemon Go like 40 hours a week. We were addicted. And then as far as the business goes, um, I, was, I flipped stuff on eBay my whole life. And I just found a good flip in the form of a Japanese Charizard Grand Prix card. I managed to buy them in bulk, sold them individually in the States, I made a lot of money that way, and then someone suggested, hey, you sell all these Japanese Charizards, do you want to sell other Japanese things? We we could use those, and this was during COVID. I have a whole long video about this, so 
to, to shorten it up, started selling booster boxes I sourced from Instagram sellers, and uh, it just scaled up from there. So, you know, childhood dreams, just like everyone else, a very lucky eBay flip and a very timely market thanks to the you know, global disaster that was the pandemic. So a little bit of luck, a little bit of timing. Uh, this guy, Slater Curtis. So he talks about, it's a very small print. So he's got a business he started. Uh, it's on 1.4 million in gross. That's awesome. And one of the large portion of my revenue comes from brick and mortar that I built a relationship with. Have you ever, have you ever reached out to large stores like brick and mortar to basically sell them stuff in bulk? And yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, brick and mortar folks that we sell in bulk too. We're not a distributor by any means, like we're retail first, but uh, we, we can offer better prices if you buy in bulk. Just email me, brian at pokeyne.com. Our biggest customers are actually streamers, though, uh, TikTok and, and whatnot and Drip. Those folks reach out to us quite frequently, and, and they buy products. You know, one guy spends like $20,000 every six to eight weeks or so, and a lot of other people spend between you know five and six a month or so. So most of it's streamers. Uh, a lot of brick and mortar people already have a distributor, so they don't really need me. You know, they're if you have a brick and mortar store, you've got just as good of access as I do. But if you're starting out, email me. I can try to make something work. Oh, he also asked about Google Ads. Yeah, so he he also asked about Google Ads, and he's asking, hey, why don't you talk about those more? Google Ads for me, they've just always sucked. Uh, I use Google Merchant Center, so you can you know find my products if you type in a product name. There's a chance that mine will show up in the shopping area but I don't I don't pay for Google Ads. The cost per the cost per conversion just isn't good compared to Meta, so like Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and I, I really don't know why, but the cost per click, the cost per conversion, just the the everything about it, it's just way more expensive than Facebook and Insta. And I've done both for years. Um, for a while I did like two thousand a month on Google and three thousand a month on Facebook Insta. And it got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I'm making so much more money on, on Meta. It's like, what am I even effing with Google for? So I took all my Google money out and I put 5,000 into Meta per month. And now I lowered it to three because the ROAS just wasn't doing as well. I think mostly because there wasn't a lot of cool products out. Now that uh, the, sh the new Sparky set, the new Pikachu set, whatever it's called, now that that's coming out and when the new... Uh, like EV Heroes 2 in December comes out, and then, of course, the Rocket set and the Gym Hero set, when those are coming out, I'll probably go ham in meta, like I'm talking six to eight grand a month, because the products will be so high, uh, will have such a high conversion that every dollar I spend is going to not only get me money back, but it's also going to get me customers that they might not buy right away, but they're like, oh, you know, he's got the new Rocket set, like I'm, I'm going to think of him on my next birthday or Christmas or something. So I'll go hard when there's really good products. Uh, right now, I mean, Shrouded Fable was kind of the most exciting thing, and it, it, it sucks. It's not even, I mean, it's it's probably fine if you're a, a competitor, but as far as, like, the general collector goes, my general customer, it's not a hot item at all. So I'm down to 3K a month in meta spend, and I, I don't intend to go up until surging comes out. Canto Shark, I answered this in a vlog. I did a little mini Q and A in a, in a vlog, but I got to shout out Canto Shark because they're they're great people. Uh, I know they have like sleeves and and material and whatnot, but they also seem to be a great source for like vintage stuff and hard to find you know booster boxes and, and stuff. I've never used them personally, but they've got a great reputation. So I'll I'll read Canto Shark's question. Uh, what's your deadlift, bench, weighted dip, pull up, squat, and OHP at? What's your goal, BW? Those are a lot of words that describe people that go to the gym with a uh, mission and discipline and organization. I don't know the answer to most of those. I know my deadlift. Uh, the question was, what's your deadlift, bench, weighted oh. dip, pull-up squat, and OHP at? What's your goal, BW? See how I just mm. want to know that? Yeah. 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 Uh, Andrea goes with a whole plan every time she goes to the gym. She's very organized. She has a whole checklist of things and goals and, and PRs. I just kind of go and I do whatever machines open and I just do a lot of sets of it. Uh, so deadlift, I don't deadlift. I don't think I'm coordinated enough to do that safely. Bench, I bench like plates and 20s. It's fine. Weighted dip, uh, I used to like put chains on my ankles or like dumbbells and I'm just not fancy enough anymore. So I just, I just do a bunch of them. Pull-ups, I try to do 100 pull-ups a day 
when I'm at the gym. That's the, that's the one thing I'm really like objectively good at. Squat, I effed my knee up doing some stupid parkour move like 12 years ago and I literally can't squat now. So always skip leg day. It's, it's a mantra for a reason. I do the little lay down when you push the machine up squat machine and I do two plates on each side but then my knee hurts for the rest of the week so yeah that's why I have skinny legs uh OHP I don't know what that means overhead press overhead press I literally wow that was good I literally cannot overhead press I think 20 pounds like I don't have the flexibility <laughs> to raise my arms I got effed up shoulders too. I think it's a genetic thing because my dad had to get his shoulders replaced. I have muscle aesthetically, but I'm actually not very good at the gym. I can answer these questions way better than you can. Do you want to come over here and answer the questions? No. Come on. I mean, like, none of my numbers aren't, like, big enough to, like, brag okay. about. You're talking, like... you're talking to people like me who collect Pokemon cards full time. Your numbers yeah, are going to be but great. Like, it's not, like, a lot at all. Yeah, since Andrea is such okay. an organized gym girl, let's let's hear what her stats are. So, okay. so yeah. my overhead press was will, will be like next week I'll do twelve and a half pounds. So, but that's of dumbbells one in each hand. So, yeah. like twenty four pounds, twenty five pounds total. Yeah, like that's not a lot. Okay, what was the other one? Uh, deadlift. Yeah. I've never wrote down anything on my phone at the gym. Uh, 40 pounds. <laughs> yeah. You need to, like, say it more confidently. That's not a lot. Bench? You don't really bench. I do. I, I do dumbbell bunches. Oh, dumbbell, true. bench press. Uh, 20s. Solid. <laughs> Weighted dip? No, I don't do dips. You do, like, try, like... I did a tricep pull down, which is... Oh, I don't know. Oh, because it's all the, goofy. The weight, the... The machine at the Y, it doesn't have like pounds connected to it. It just says like one, two, three, four, five, and it's and we can't figure out the system. <laughs> yeah, the there's metric, there's imperial, and then there's the YMCA, and and there can I don't understand it. I think you you do like two. No, three. Three. Okay, the number three at the YMCA. Whatever that means. In Omaha. <laughs> Lastly, I answered this in the vlog too, but uh, Dr. Dayton Hancock, Unagaba promos, <laughs> shout it out. Uh, he says, hey, why don't people talk about the Unagaba cards more? And uh, honestly, I don't know. I think they're cool. So this is uh, one Unagaba item. It's like a EV deck box. There's deck box, sleeves, and a cool play mat. It's on the site. There's no packs in here, so it's kind of a scam if you open it. I'd suggest buying it for your sealed collection because it actually does look really cool. But there are uh, Nagaba packs as well, and you might have seen kind of the hand-drawn. There's a hand-drawn Umbreon, Espeon, all the evolutions. They're kind of in a like simplistic line art form. Type it into Google. We used to sell the packs. Now they're super bougie. They're like 25 bucks a pack. I just I can't justify it. I think it's stupid. But you can buy the singles for a pretty good price on like eBay, for example. So type in Nagabon eBay. They're really cool. And I, I hope Pokemon partners with uh, that artist again in the future because it's it's good stuff. It's just a little overpriced right now. That concludes today's Q&A. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to buy some stuff, go to pokeyne.com. If you want to learn how to start your own Pokemon card business, subscribe to the channel. Any final words? Don't do it. Fast lane when I pass in the street. Bag of money in the passenger seat.